We're back. We're back in business. Tea Time has been absent from the internet for a long time. But guess what? Tea Time has returned, okay? That's what it took, you know? And in fact, the Guild Wars 3 news, that was actually leaked on purpose because I don't know if you know this actually, but the uh, NC Korean shareholders, they're actually a really big fan of the show and that's why they leaked Guild Wars 3, uh, just to make sure that the show came back so they could have something to watch, something to kind of enjoy, like in between these highly important board meetings. Uh, so we're back. We've got Sneb, we've got Nike, we've got gameplay. And we're to talk about the news. We've got some interesting stuff going on. Uh, welcome to the show, gamers. I think Nike, were you about to say something, Nike? I feel like you were uh, eager yeah, to, the, to get uh, in. The, the C, if you really think about it, you're like three degrees of separation away from the CFO or the CEO or whoever that, that suited <laughs> gentleman from South Korea was. Like, you know someone who knows Grouch, who knows mm. the head of NC Southwest, who knows that bespe bespectacled Korean man. <laughs> And so, in theory, like, you could pull uh, strings, we could get him on tea time, I mm. think. Yeah, we could make that happen. It's, uh, that's the next episode, I guess. But uh, anyway, uh, well, I guess I'll give a little bit of a, you know, a summary of what's been going on recently. Yes, it looks like Guild Wars 3 is something that is kind of maybe happening uh, right now. We could be in the midst of it. Uh, well, probably not for a little while. But yeah, there was a shareholder meeting for NC, which is, of course kind of the uh, parent company, if you will, of, uh, of ArenaNet, which of course makes Guild Wars 2, where it was just blurted out that actually Guild Wars 3, it, there's a little bit of ambiguity on it. Like, I think a statement has been made saying that, oh yeah, it's been greenlit for development, or on the other hand, it's already been worked on, right? Like, it's, it's a little bit hard to say. And of course, it was a very off-the-cuff remark. So it's probably something kind of in the middle of all of that. But yeah, Guild Wars 3 is apparently on the table, which is, I think, something that not a lot of people expected. I, I think Guild Wars 3 is one of those things that's a bit, not exactly sure if it makes a lot of sense, uh, to be honest. You know, there's a reason why MMOs don't get sequels. Um, you know, all the big ones, they just kind of keep going forever and ever and ever. Guild Wars 2, of course, being kind of an exception to that. But yeah, that's the news. Guild Wars 3 is happening. It's not an April Fool's joke. I think what's very funny is this will probably be uploaded on April 1st. So that will add some... Uh, that will add some confusion, I think, which which is good. I'm glad to contribute to that. But anyway, what do we think about the situation? Guild Wars 3. Guild Wars 3 is confirmed. Guild Wars 2 is dead. Great. Yeah. It's over. It's over. Uninstall now. There is no point in continuing to play the game. Yeah. Well, if you haven't saw now, you won't get your Hall of Monuments 2 done. Ooh, that is true, time. actually. And then you're going to be missing out. You're going to be missing yeah, out. Yeah, you'll big. be missing out on some skins that you'll never use in Guild Wars 3. Mm. It'll feel good. Yeah. Exactly. But I mean, I want to open up. What, what do we think about Guild Wars 3? What's, what, what's the thoughts here? Like, do we have any thoughts? Do we have no thoughts whatsoever? Of course, the information's, we don't really know anything, but what do we think? Is this, I, is this a I good move, a big Wars move? Or like, what, what's going on? I think it could be a good move if it's Guild Wars 1 with good PvE. Okay. Yeah, I, so I mean, I, I, know, I, I said that to provoke the Guild Wars 1 PvE people mm. because <laughs> they think the game has good PvE and it kind of doesn't. It, it, it's not good. Wow. Objectively not good. That, but that, that's a bit harsh. Just, you know, Guild yeah. Wars 1 catching strays here. We're talking about Guild Wars 3 going back two games. Look, it's if you watch like a Guild Wars 3 speedrun, it's... it's pretty pretty funny it's it's weird it's not it's not fun it's not fun to look at it's not wow. good and the bosses they have no mechanic it, it, it's not it's dated game design that's for sure wow so i mean would, would that be something that, do you have kind of a, a theory on where they might go with the game design i think that's we, we can use that as a segue we can use that oh, as yeah, an for avenue sure. here like what do you think is going to be going on like if, i know some the, people are like oh they're going to go like? full action combat they're going to go full action combat but okay Okay. Whatever they do, they got to raise the skill floor. They've got to raise the skill floor so that the the you know the the, the TBI victims in this community can keep up and and not fall behind in end game content. Mm. So you think they'd make they try and I I think okay we, here, here's where we can turn this into an actual topic of discussion. I, I think that uh, one of the issues that Guild Wars Two has um, kind of uh, 
accumulated over the years and definitely one big benefit of making a guild wars 3 making a new game is very much the idea of kind of trimming away the fat right like how many versions of everything do we have in guild wars 2 you know we've got um you've got in terms of content you've got dungeons you've got fractals you've got drms You've got all this kind of stuff, right? Like, then you have, um, you know, raids and strike missions, which are kind of the same thing, but kind of not at the same time, right? You have rifts, you have convergences, you have a huge amount of different systems uh, that could be distilled down and streamlined down. You could look at gearing, and then we've got runes and sigils. You use six runes, even though that's kind of obsolete. Um, uh, relics, at this point, were kind of split off from runes. I don't know, like, there's infusions as well. There's a lot of bloat on some of these systems. You have a million different stat types that are just completely worthless and just do nothing. Um, there's a, a whole bunch of pretty much everything in the game that is completely useless and is does nothing except to be a noob track. You've got a billion different currencies, a thousand different reward structures. I could go on. And I think this is something that Sneb was... We, me and Sneb were chatting about this, and I, I think this could be an interesting topic to talk about, is that would Guild Wars 3 try to really distill the game down into a couple of core systems? I'm not saying, you know, make it just like a one-button simulator. I mean, hey, look, you know, what would be the difference, right? People play Guild Wars 2 as a one-button simulator already, right? So that nothing lost there. But uh, I think this could be an opportunity to remove a lot of the feature bloat and system bloat that, to be fair, afflicts, I think, all life service games to an extent. Uh, but certainly Guild Wars 2 is one that has suffered a lot, I think, because of uh, constantly moving from one thing to another, right? Like, you know, changing how PvE is going to go, changing how gearing is going to go, all that kind of stuff. So uh, I, I want to get Sneb in on this. What, what do you think about this? Uh, what, what, what do you think that says about what could happen with Guild Wars 3? Yeah, like we talked about in the Sneb time the other day, I really think that if they do Guild Wars 3, that they have to really pare things back. One of the biggest criticisms that Guild Wars 2 gets is that it tries to do too many things at once. And in doing all of those things, some of it is pretty good, but some of it's pretty bad. And you, you in particular, you suffer from these really long content droughts in specific game modes, or you just have abandoned content in, altogether. Like dragon response missions were created for a few months and then they never went back. Or fractals just doesn't have a fractal for a year or whatever. Mm. Or dungeons just never get looked at again. And so if they were to do a Guild Wars 3, I would expect that they would try to be very intentional about what they want the game to be and what they want to focus on rather than try to do everything all together all at once again. Yeah. And there is another precedent for that, of course. There was an interview with some of the ArenaNet devs on the Manorworks um, subreddit, in fact, uh, which was, for those who don't know, Manorworks is a newish game studio that was kind of put together uh, by Mike O'Brien and some other ex-ArenaNet developers after uh, after the happening, right, when and Mike O'Brien was uh, leaving the company. And there was a, an, an AMA there, and there was a question... I. I paraphrase it a little bit you could very easily find this by the way if you wanted to look it up it's on the man of work subreddit uh and it was something like you know what what um you know what did you learn from guild wars 2 development or or like was there anything that you know didn't you you think like wasn't a good idea and the reply i believe it was from isaiah cartwright who's a very well-known guild wars one and two developer actually was something along the lines of uh don't make too many game modes right? Uh, like, don't add all these different things because it becomes extremely difficult to maintain. And I think we do see that reflected in the development history of Guild Wars 2. I think the game has really struggled to maintain all of its many game modes at the same time, that's for sure. Because bear in mind, you've got open world PvE, instance PvE, PvP, and world versus world. That's a lot of different game modes that's, that you have to try and make content for. And of course, develop around in terms of like fixing the systems, right? And of course, looking at rewards all the kind of peripheral stuff as well around that there's a lot going on there so i i, I definitely agree with this i could 100 percent see a guild wars 3 that tries to really focus on a couple of things and do them extremely well um rather than be a generalist uh, style of mmo it is quite interesting though because i think the, the other side of this is that i think guild wars 2 has kind of benefited from in in some sense of being a generalist uh because i think it's kind of got a little bit of something for everyone and actually the the slow content release in guild wars 2 is kind of compensated for by the fact that you can just change game mode to kind of rotate around a little bit but i guess you could also argue that if they focused more they could make more stuff so then you wouldn't run out of stuff to do and have to rotate around game modes i oh, don't know it's uh 
it's a difficult evaluation to make, I think, uh, when it comes to like uh, narrowing down the systems. But I could certainly see that happening again uh, because it's a brand new game and that really does give the developers an opportunity to kind of laser focus in on a couple of things that they want to do really well. I'd agree I with that. I, I feel like Guild Wars 2 came out right at the end of the era where you could have a do anything do or a do everything MMO and still have it launch like successfully. Mm. I, I feel like people that are trying to do that now are going to end up either in development hell and the game will never come out or it'll just come out so rushed and incomplete that it just falls on its face. And, uh, and, and sure. Guild Wars two didn't come out with like, you know, fully finished systems but at least you know pvp exist ranked pvp existed world world existed and and you know open world pve and like even fractals came out a month after launch like that's pretty good like now i don't think other games can can do that so it it's hard to to think of like a guild wars 3 that it like and this is Delta in chat. Like he thinks that Guild Wars Three is going to be like a relaunch of Guild Wars Two, like a two point five. But I, part part of me agrees with that because it just seems so hard to launch a new AAA MMO that come that hits launch day day one fully featured, with every game mode like robust enough to stand on to stand up to like the scrutiny of people that have not a lot of time. But on the other hand, the whole point of doing a new game is getting people that don't play your game to play it, you know, to get like that new game hype, to get like the Asmongold, to get all the all the streamers to play your game because it's the hot new, it's the new hype MMO. But if if all they hear is, yeah, it's, it's Guild Wars 2 uh, remastered, those people are not going to play. <laughs> the, those, and, and those people represent more like other customers who are similar who, who they might they they aren't going to give a remaster a shot but they would have played a new game so i'm kind of divided in 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 what it could possibly be in, in those regards because business sense it doesn't make sense to do a remaster but also it doesn't seem viable to do a whole new game either so i, I don't know yeah and we're kind of headbutting the there's a reason why there isn't a WoW 2. Um, the, the, that's, that's what we're running into here, I think. It's like, if you release a sequel to your game, it's competing with the original game, so you want it to be very, very distinct uh, from that uh, game. But at the same time, it's also really difficult to kind of come up with something new, right? Like, at the end of the day, like, a lot of these MMOs, they have a certain degree of similarity, especially when the game you're trying to have a sequel to is as general and kind of wide in what it does as Guild Wars 2 uh, at the same time. I mean, time, correct me so. if I'm wrong, but, like, in theory, Cataclysm for WoW could have been WoW 2 or, like, a relaunch. You know what I mean? Like, a, kind of, like yeah. they, they could have called it WoW 2. Uh, you know, and 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 it didn't work it... out. That's the thing. It really didn't. It, you know, in in some sense, it didn't work out. I think the Blizzard devs even said that um, doing what they did there because they kind of remastered the entire core game in a way, right? Like all of the original content from Vanilla WoW and up, they kind of remastered it. Um, yeah, they said that wasn't worth it, pretty much. <laughs> it wasn't good. And, you know, in a lot of ways, that's when the, the player base of the game started to decline. And I think you actually can't entirely blame that on Cataclysm. We're going a little bit of a tangent here, I guess. We'll, we'll, we'll re-rail. You can't entirely blame that on Cataclysm because that was kind of when MMO started to stop being the thing right like you know the peak of wow was kind of wrath of the lich king that was that when it was the ultimate omega game with like 13 million subscribers or something like that the game still has seven and a half today by the way which is actually kind of interesting that's uh, a lot more than uh, than i would have even expected actually for a while uh but you know i think cataclysm was that game trying to adapt to the changing times, right? Like people were starting to go crazy on MOBAs, right? And all that kind of stuff. So MMOs were a thing of the past. They tried to change it, but I uh, don't know. Zoomers, man, they, they just, you know, they don't want to be killing level seven boar. They want to be uh, in the jungle, you know, ganking people in League of Legends. Good. <laughs> the, the one thing that I think is a big mistake for Guild Wars 2 players to say is that they're not going to 
you know, kill Guild Wars 2 by launching Guild Wars 3 because they'll lose all their existing customers. I don't think that that logically makes sense because a lot of the people will come to play Guild Wars 3 regardless. Um, and the people that do quit are like, let uh, that I don't want to give numbers, but the people that do quit are insignificant compared to the new blood that would be entering if they launched a brand new game. Like, you're, like if you look at the sales of Guild Wars 2 that first month, that's what they want. That huge, if you look at like yeah. the month by month sales, the quarterly sales, that first 2012 quarter when you know it it blew the roof off that's what they want back and you think about how many players that is that was yeah. hundreds of thousands if not millions of players that's what they want so the thirty thousand people that are hardcore guild wars 2 fans that are like i will never play guild wars 3 it's like you're irrelevant because there's <laughs> going to be a million people there will be a million people playing the game of guild wars 3 on launch mm. so you're the twenty thousand holdouts are totally financially irrelevant unfortunately yeah and i think there i mean this is i think i'm kind of straying into copium territory here or, or kind of like delusion territory but i think what is actually very interesting is that um what if the entire reason why the development strategy for guild wars 2 has changed to this kind of yearly expansion model that you know let's be honest like it looks like a little bit less content than before right like you know the, the soto has been pretty light on content i would say compared to other things like what if that's actually the plan uh, alongside guild wars uh guild wars 3 actually again i say this is a little bit copium but you know if you compare this to world of warcraft that's kind of what they're doing as well actually funnily enough like blizzard are saying oh yeah we're gonna run our old version of our game and we're even gonna actively develop that game and come up with some stuff like hardcore uh season of discovery season of mastery maybe even classic plus at some point they're also running cataclysm at the same time and they're also running retail at the same time they're kind of doing it like there's they're running multiple versions of their game that serves different purposes and different audiences uh simultaneously could be a strategy that ArenaNet could be interested in as well, because you know I feel like they, if they are going to make a Guild Wars three, I feel like they really wouldn't want to kill Guild Wars two, right? Because Guild Wars two is profitable, like the numbers look good on the Soto model. I guess we'll have to see how it turns out with the next expansion, but Soto did well. Um, the game is doing well right now; it's it's active. The only game mode that nobody plays is PvP, <laughs> um, but it looks pretty good. Um, so I would imagine that that's going to be part of the strategy that, um, Arena don't just want to like drop Guild Wars 2 and just leave it to rot. Um, you know, uh, cause you could argue they kind of did this with, with Guild Wars 1, right? Like Guild Wars 1 is essentially a dead game. People still play it and they kept the servers running, but it's not, um, it's not active, right? Like I, uh, and Nike, oh. you'll be able to comment on this more, <laughs> I would say. Um, but I feel like the game would be way less playable if you couldn't play with heroes, right? And mercenaries. If you couldn't play with um, heroes, the game would be 100% completely dead, except for the two <laughs> guilds of speedrunners that would do content together. Yeah, exactly, right? So I, I think we could maybe see them try to maintain Guild Wars 2 in a similar way. I, want, I think Sneb, once again, I want to unleash, I want to unchain Sneb real quick. Uh, um, well, get him in. I, I'm going to go back to something that was said earlier. Okay, let's um, go. Let's do it. So Asmongold was mentioned. I think that uh, I think like two weeks ago or something, Asmongold said Guild Wars Two is a dead game, <laughs> and that's why he's not interested in ever trying it. And it's funny because I mean, he's when just we're doing talking that about, to get a rise I mean, he's fucking trolling a little yeah. bit. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I just don't think that Guild Wars Two is a game that Asmongold would like even. And so, would Guild Wars 3 be a game that Asmongold would like? Is that even who they would want? He would try it. Target? You know, everyone everyone, you you will try everyone tries the new MMO. The new yeah, AAA oh no. MMO, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they will all tries try it. it. They do. They, dude, look, Sneb, people tried Bless Online, bro. Oh, like, boy. Like, everyone's like, oh, yeah, Bless Online's going to be so good. Do you not remember all the streamers who are saying... Oh yeah, my like god, Rocka. this is gonna be it, man, bless. This is this is finally it, man. You know, WoW is dead, Guild Wars dead, BDO dead. Yo, new launch of bless uh, here in the West, guys. This is gonna be the new fire. It was dog shit, right? It was like complete garbage. Uh, and people quit within within like hours, but um, yeah. That's- uh, Yeah, I, I, yeah. Do, I do not believe that uh, 
people are hype beasts. They'll, they just go to like a new triple A MMO is going to have like everybody playing it. Mm. And I, I think to kind of echo this, I believe this was um, uh, Chris Wilson from uh, Poe actually uh, gave a. I think I, I think this was from a talk. This is something that really stuck out to me. Like he was remarking about how he would talk to players who quit the game. Uh, years ago right and they would say oh yeah i quit the game because of this problem I, I didn't like this thing about the game and then he'll go well yeah this is actually one of the really difficult things about game dev because that issue was fixed ages ago but those players don't know about it right because they've already quit the game they don't interact with the game anymore right and they're like oh yeah that game, it's got that problem. I don't like it. And that's the big advantage of a relaunch. I think that was part of the motivation of doing kind of a, a, a relaunch with, with Path of Exile. It did end up getting changed, right? I think it it was supposed to be a lot more conjoined, but they split it because, yeah, then you end up mo modifying get both games and everyone's upset. But that was a really interesting perspective, I think, that I think, I think definitely holds true. Like, um, and kind of what Sneb was there with people saying that Guild Wars 2 is a dead game. I think that a lot of um players who who talk about Guild Wars 2 outside of the Guild Wars 2 community. And this is probably true of every MMO, of course, as well, right? To an extent. Um, but uh, people quit the game and that, there's a lot of misinformation, you know, misconceptions about the game, right? So like a relaunch is very good for kind of addressing that to an extent. Yeah, you can always tell when people quit the game based on what their complaints are about the game on, you know, internet places. Yeah. Like the people who quit the game in 2012 are like, there's there's no PVE content at Endgame. Yeah, and it's like, oh, I know exactly when you quit the game. Cool. Yeah, but it's not really the case anymore so much. So there is that. Yeah, but they don't care because and it doesn't matter. They they yeah. shouldn't care. Exactly because they've already. They've you already you quit. go to a restaurant, maybe you don't. Maybe it's not even bad. You just you know you know it just doesn't like delight you. It doesn't like become one of your staple places to go. You know, you find out they have a new manager. It's like, ah, eh, I don't, I don't, I'm not, I don't need to go back, even with the new manager. Mm. But if they burn the place to the ground and rebuild a new place where that was, maybe you're willing to go, give it, a, give it a shot. Yeah. Um. You know, there's one perspective. This is a slight derail here, but to be honest, we're, I'm trying to, we're trying to find some rails to go on here. It's always a little bit difficult to talk about this because, of course, we, we know nothing. It's pure speculation, pure unbounded speculation at this point. But, man, I almost wish DeRoyer was here. Maybe I'll just call him randomly, actually, because one of the things that um, he said a very What if you called him and he was dressed up as DeRoyer? Just, oh, I mean, like completely. I mean, just, we're getting some. Uh, you're like, why are you dressed up in that? Did you know we were going to call? And he'd be like, oh, yeah, yeah I knew you were going to call. That's why. We're like, oh, got it. Uh, well, I mean, that would be a boost to our viewer numbers, I'm sure, actually, significantly. But um, like, uh, I, I think one of the things that he said a very long time ago is that one of the only things that would make him not interested in playing Guild Wars 2 uh, would be Guild Wars 3, the announcement of Guild Wars 3. Uh, and I think that's actually a fairly common sentiment um, in the play. Not not everyone, uh, and I think you know that I think people argue back and forth on this a lot. I think it's uh, you know a, a contentious issue for sure. Um, I think there is this idea that uh, you know I only want to play the you know the the relevant version of the game or or the game where you know that's going to continue onwards or that's going to be like the the new version of the game. I think that's a fairly common sentiment that's going around right now. Uh, and this is this is definitely a big inconvenience for um for Arena, I guess. It hasn't actually been a huge story in the media uh, that much, I guess, because it hasn't really been nailed down that much, uh, and there hasn't been like anything super official regarding this just yet. But I I'm curious what you gamers think about the fact that um this you know the the news of the Guild Wars three development cycle or whatever is going on uh, could potentially actually impact. Uh, how players interact with Guild Wars 2 right now. Like, what do we, what do we think is going to happen with that? I, I think it's like a catastrophe from mm. a PR perspective because you've had one thing said, which was, hey, like, we are really, I swear that this is like almost verbatim. We are committed to Guild Wars 2 and its future. We for are working years. on, yeah. they, for they, years, they we are working multiple on multiple years. expansions. And so everyone's like, hell yeah, brother, like we're going to get like a million expansions, Guild Wars 2 for life. And then suddenly NCSoft is just like casually drops that Guild Wars 3 is something that will be worked on or something. 
And everyone now questions the former. They're like, okay, well, are you committed to Guild Wars 2? Like, are you only going to do two more expansions, one more expansion? Like, when is Guild Wars 3 happening? And so what that does for people now is it makes them question how emotionally invested they should be in their video game. Mm, Because turns out people dump a lot of themselves in these games. Like, when they like to make the character look a certain way and buy certain things. And you might, uh, even though it might not seem totally rational because the thing might be coming out in five years, there's still a level of impermanence that people will feel. And so they'll go, well, you know, what's the point of buying this if I'm just going to... Yeah, there's a lot of people who are only still playing because of sunk cost. And when they hear that there's an end date, or or like there's a finish line coming mm. or or whatever it that is the thing that makes them reevaluate their sunk cost like it, if if guild wars 2 was just going to have infinite expansions to the horizon then they would just keep trucking along sunk cost you know yep i'm in i'm i'm this deep i'm going to keep going <laughs> but when you're like when you're like yes the game is definitely going to be deprecated in 3 years and there's going to be a new game then they go hmm maybe i shouldn't sink any more into this you know like so yeah mm. i think that the the sunk yeah. cost people are the ones who are the most upset yeah, yeah. and so w- will it actually even move the needle at all when it comes to people who play actively or spend money or whatever i don't know it's pretty hard to tell spending money is the thing that would would freak me out like if i like if i was a relatively new player who wasn't like 100 percent up on the news of the game and like you know you just hear whisper you know you, you know you know you're not on the reddit you don't go to the forums but you hear people like chattering about guild wars 3 you're like well should i buy this copper fed salvage matic <laughs> and get out my credit card because this this True. game's going away soon there's going to be a new one uh, why i'm not buying this you know like it, it kind of you understand like it would make those sort of players like trepidatious about spending money on the cash shop mm. yeah i mean i yeah. guess i i guess but I'm they could that. always they could always it might not be like a game it might not be guild wars 2 like the re, like a pure relaunch, but it could very well be that they share a cash shop, and the purchases you made in the cash shop uh, carry over to the new game. <sighs> would they do that though? I find that would be so weird. They, they have to. No, no, oh, no, I hope they, they don't no, have no, the no, same no. business model. No, no, no. They, they, they I hope they have a different business model. Something like that. Though. Wait, will they, they? They absolutely will. No, no, no. They will absolutely do something similar to Hall of Monuments. They have to because because of exactly a Hall of Monuments, but it's about. based on your cash shop purchases. <laughs> Well, no. <laughs> 50 maybe. out of 50. Yeah. Maybe. I don't know. Hall um, of Whales. <laughs> <laughs> I got the whale monument. <laughs> yeah, well, maybe. But the, the big the big thing here is the whale statue in the game. <laughs> anyway. I have been summoned. Oh, ah, Daroya has Someone arrived. said my name and I just appeared out of nowhere. Yeah. Hi. Log in. Welcome. <laughs> He's here, yeah. I summoned DeRoy, guys. DeRoy is going to set us straight on why he now is going yeah. to fully yeah. quit Guild Wars 2. Yeah. It's actually kind of funny because, like, but, I mean... Oh. Sorry, Snap. Go ahead. There were wait, problems. what did you say? Oh, wait. <laughs> well, it, okay. It's actually kind of funny because, like, um... I mean, t you kind of said already what I said. Uh, what I was thinking. Um... But like, okay, so I guess uh, story time, because funnily enough, like way back when, this is like, I want to say like five years ago, this was kind of like the catalyst to me kind of withdrawing from the game. It was the first time that we kind of found out that ArenaNet had been working on something else in the background, and that may or may not have been Guild Wars 3. You never know what it was actually that they were working on. Um, but they, they were working on something very big. Some, pe- some people know more than others, but hey, whatever. Um, just that, sh- that realization way back when was the thing that made me go, huh, maybe, I, <clears throat> maybe I'm not going to sink so much more time into this. Because if it dies, 
will this all have been kind of not in vain because i obviously i and i think a lot of uh, us can kind of uh, echo this feeling it's not that it feels like it's been wasted time like we've enjoyed our time in the game in many different ways doing many different things and accomplishments but was i going to put more effort in i didn't have that answer and i i struggled with that for for a while and then i slowly just kind of withdrew and so when this news came out that like just now that guild wars 3 may be back on the table um it it didn't really obviously it didn't hit us hard but it was like sure i mean let's try <laughs> let's try let's try to let's try to redo that um success uh it was great when guild wars 2 came out um but i i guess, I guess it it kind of evoked that same feeling again of like hmm, maybe maybe i don't need that purple title like maybe i'm just gonna lean back for a little bit and see what comes hmm. i doubt that that's actually what's gonna happen though because I, I i feel like uh i found a pretty steady i don't know time flow I don't, know, I don't know what to call it um for me playing the game um i feel it's very very moderate nowadays and i i enjoy it for what it is uh and i'm not i'm not in that same mindset as i was those five years ago when everything was kind of crumbling and i felt like oh no oh no is my whole reality going to shift now <laughs> and that's why they have to relaunch a new game yeah. because the the people like the Royer are tapped out. We need people. That, we need the next generation of grinders yes. to come in and and fill their holes with purple gear. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> purple in every hole. Exactly. Yeah. I am not. I'm not. Oh, it hurts. Yeah. I. It, <laughs> it, it, it hurts. I, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I I do I no, I, I do find this. I I want to poke you about this to be honest because I I, I it's it's unusual to me, um because I feel like. Every game, well, you, this is the sad thing, right? Eventually, guys, we all log out of our favorite video game and we never log back in, right? Like that, that is a, a harsh reality about games. Everything is ephemeral. Yeah, it is. It's all Time ephemeral. Moves. And yeah. it's, it's like, yeah, I mean, I, I, I think I, I understand, or at least I, I cognitively understand what you're saying. Uh, and I think it might just be approaching video games in a different way. Hey, you know. That's how it is. You know, it would, be, it would be boring if everyone was the same. But yeah, I, I can't quite, uh, I can't quite understand um, or or relate to going like, oh well, you know, there's a new game coming out, so I'm just gonna stop playing this one or kind of like be less invested or inclined to grind um, this one. I yeah, think. I, I, I mean, yeah. on 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 reflection for myself, I guess it was it was solely due to the fact that I was putting too much of myself into a video game um than what i felt i was getting in return mm. and obviously that's a that's a false logic like i shouldn't be thinking about it like that but i was back in the day um and i was think i was genuinely just taking the vi the video game too seriously um yeah, fair. and and i it was kind of a wake up call in some in some ways for me at least i i view that part of my life as being a little bit of a, a wake-up call and mm. did a lot of changes for the better and i mean honestly i now i now i love the game for what it is back in the day i had all these expectations and hopes and and dreams almost like for for this game to become uh more than more than i don't know what i could dream up um yeah and yeah, it just it just wasn't meeting those expectations, and then realizing that the devs were working on something else. I mean, that kind of just yeah crushed me or crushed those dreams, not me. Yeah, it crushed those dreams, and it just made it very real to me that maybe I just prioritize differently. Yeah, I mean, I, I to be yeah. honest, that's very much. I think that part of that story is. I think that will resonate with a lot of people. It definitely resonates with me. Like, yeah, a huge part of the fact that uh, a reason of why I'm, I've completely reevaluated how I engage with Guild Wars 2 is entirely because I go, oh yeah, this, this is it, right? Like, you know, 
in a certain sense, you know, the, the copium was completely ripped off, right? Like, this is yeah. as far <laughs> as it goes. This is going to be the game. If that's not good enough for you, then you should leave. And so, you know, I, I play WoW. Um, you know, essentially, right? Like, that that definitely does happen. So I, I understand that part of, like, the, the idea of, of kind of wanting Guild Wars 2 to, you know, r ascend to its final form, right? But then you realize that, yeah, this actually is its final form. Like, this is it. Um... And that can be very demoralizing, I think, especially if you're very invested in the game and you, you, you want the game to do as well as possible. But, you know, from my perspective, that's why I think about Guild Wars 2 and I go, yo, this is big, because that means there's a new game, right, that isn't going to be settled in its final form until the rest of time, right? It, it's, it has the opportunity to be something new and be something different that might be exciting. Like, the copium there is, of course, that's assuming that they're going to target me as a player, which I'm not going to lie, is astronomically unlikely. Uh, but Hey, you never know, right? Simulator. You never know. You know, it could happen. Uh, <laughs> maybe. It'd be like I mean, Star I'd... Stardew Valley, Guild Wars Three. <laughs> I mean, by that time, uh, every, I mean, all of our lives will have probably change in five years. I don't know for in some way, shape, or form. And hopefully, uh, the meteor know. hits Earth before then, so that we don't oh, have to deal yeah. with the unpleasant reality of what's going to happen. Maybe if it if the game is bad, then uh, the meteor can hit just after, so we don't have to live with it at least. Yeah, but it's yeah, a rough um, launch. Yeah, I I do yeah. want to bring Sneb back in because right as Deroya uh, derailed our stream and, and ruined the show, uh, Sneb was oh, actually sorry. yeah yeah. <laughs> so Sneb was talking about how he thinks that they're gonna have to do some kind of carryover with the microtransactions between Guild Wars 2 and Guild Wars 3. And that, that's interesting. I, I, I want to hear more about that. I want to hear what, what you think is going on there. Uh, and, and I don't think it has yeah. to be microtransaction specific, but I think that they have to do some kind of carryover like Guild Wars 1 because mm. of precisely what we were talking about a bit ago, which is when people don't feel like there's... A, they might not feel like it's worth investing in, the reason they did that in Guild Wars 1 is because it was brilliant. People didn't take a break from Guild Wars 1 to wait for Guild Wars 2. They played it even harder, <laughs> right? Because they had to. They were like, oh my gosh, like there's all these rewards you can get. If you play Guild Wars 1, it'll transfer over all of these skins and stuff. Like We have to play even harder. People played that game so freaking hard um, after Guild Wars 2 was announced. Uh, I think it's... First. Because yeah, I was on the it, I was on the exact opposite uh, end of that spectrum. There, the moment that I saw Guild Wars Two announced was the moment, the same day that I dropped Guild Wars One. Hmm. I was like, "All right, I'll be back." That, <laughs> yeah, and, 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 and so you know what? I, I think like that's fair, it, but... but I think that a lot of people um, would have done that same thing, but didn't because they wanted to complete the Hall of Monuments. Yeah, I think. Stan's I think right. you're there still were, gonna the, lose the, people, but. This helps. I think there was definitely people who were like, "Oh, I got, I have to get fifty out of yeah, fifty yeah, yeah, before yeah, yeah. Guild Wars Two launches." And maybe once they got fifty out of fifty, they, you know, took a break from Guild Wars One. But, but it just kept people engaged. Not all people, um, but it it certainly helped with engagement. Because imagine if they didn't do that. I think a lot of people would have been like, "Well, nothing's coming. There aren't going to be any updates for a while." I'm out. I'm going to go play something else. And uh, that would have had ramifications for Guild Wars 2 even, because some people might have been like, well, I don't even know if I should buy Guild Wars 2 anymore because I am really into WoW or whatever other game. So okay. I think you have to create something that incentivizes continual play while you're developing the other game um, such that there's some kind of carryover. I think a big difference is Guild Wars 1 was vir a virtually dead game Yeah. when Guild Wars 2 was announced. That's not the case here. Yeah, and that's not the case here. And I know people do not want to, uh, to hear, hear that Guild Wars 1 was a dead game, but, but believe me, PvP was already, like, sunset. Like, the era of competitive PvP was over. And, you know, and no new PvE content was coming or would ever come to the game when Guild Wars 2 was announced. So, the, and the community was probably very few players, like, were logging in on a daily basis. Like, probably five digit, like, low five digits on mm. a daily basis. 
I think that is definitely not the case uh, here. Yeah. I, th I mean, th I think there were... Wait, hang on. When did the um, Guild Wars Beyond stuff happen? Was that after Guild Wars 2 was announced or before? I actually can't remember. Um, I feel like it was after because I never tried it. Yeah, I, I feel like it was after as well. Because they were... It, that, that content was really interesting too, actually, because they were kind of testing out a couple of ideas um on and and that you could kind of see in guild wars 2 actually right like the the way that the mesmer boss was for example actually funny enough like right at the end of um winds of change was kind of similar to how guild wars 2 mesmer actually played out uh and like the whole idea of like maps changing was very living world actually so there, there was still a couple of updates for guild wars 1 after but yeah it, it definitely is this very different scenario with guild wars 2 because we already know that there's another two expansions at least in the works uh, for Guild Wars 2. And I, I certainly wouldn't expect to see Guild Wars 3 anytime soon. It's very difficult to make a prediction on this, obviously, because we actually don't know the state of development because it was obviously not supposed to be public at this point that anything was going on in that regard. Uh, but realistically, if I had to guess, I'd say Guild Wars 3 is at least five years away. Like, at least. Um, in terms of like how long it's going to take to see some kind of product. And we won't hear anything about it for that, a long time. Yeah. Um, that's a very positive outlook. Yeah. Wait, you think that's positive? Wait, what, what do you think? Yeah. You think, you think it's longer than well, that? Longer it, than it five depends, years? It depends on the scope of it, really. I mean, yeah. it, it's... I mean, all all signs point to Unreal Engine. Uh, obviously, they can make things go a little bit faster and smoother with, a, with an engine that <clears throat> they don't have to natively develop and, and fix uh, as they're building the game. That might speed things up, but five years is for a completely new MMO, as I guess we're all assuming, or at least I am. Um, but I mean, it's not going to be Hearthstone, uh, Guild Wars. Version. Are you sure, though? The well, that, no, like that, that's the thing. We're, none of us are really sure about it. I guess it, it depends YouTube on how much work they already have done. Will be a farm simulator. How much work did they already have done on Guild Wars Three before 2019? Is, Good point. Yeah, how many how many assets can they dig up? Uh, <laughs> and what what was the state of whatever engine they might have been building if they were building an engine? And that was probably like themselves? four four Guild Wars Three was probably like four game directors ago. By like whoever was running that project is no longer with the company. It's probably safe. Yeah. In 2018. It's probably safe to say. So the vision for what Guild Wars Three is might not be the same as mm. what it was before the layoffs. It probably was Bird yeah. Simulator. Bird Sim, yeah, that, Bird simulated the MMO. That, that's what the yeah. uh, the game was going to be. <laughs> yeah. Bird oh, simulated MMO. Be... <laughs> Wait, is that a thing? Are you googling that? Well, no. I mean, you, you've have you seen the Bird Simulator footage? <laughs> you don't know about Bird Simulator. You don't know about Bird. Wait, Simulator? hold the phone. No, what? Mana oh. Works Bird Simulator. Yeah, you, you know, like Man oh, Wars, that, Okay, Wars. okay yeah. I didn't know the meat Mana Works. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've seen that. Yeah, they're literally making Bird Simulator. That's what. Yeah. That's what Guild Wars Two would have become. Under that looks Michael cute, Brody. though. Yeah. I mean, not yeah, for cute, me, but cute it looks is cute. what most gamers are looking for in their MMO. I mean, I'm I am sure there's a market for this. Actually, there isn't. <laughs> Turns out they couldn't get a publisher, so there is no market for it. Rip. Hey, is that real? Actually, yeah. They yeah. Can, they well, I mean, Bird Simulator is very real. It's very real. <laughs> yeah. Yikes! They shopped it around, and no one bit. Damn. Okay, all new to me. Damn. Unlucky. That sucks, bro. You honestly hate to see it. Um, yeah. But yeah, I I, th I think, you know, to, to go back to the original uh, branch, the strand of this conversation, I, I do think Sneb is right. I think ArenaNet will try to tie the games together. I think it's not going to be nearly as much as some people are coping. Like that, like I've seen some actually unhinged takes about this and honestly i love that you know that's what i love to see right people are saying I that seen it. can you give me a oh bit? Yeah. yeah people have been saying stuff like anet need to make sure that our entire legendary armory carries over into guild wars 3 or yeah, i am sure. done or i am done with this company Even i think that's fucking ridiculous yeah, yeah. <laughs> jesus christ yeah. that is copium yeah <laughs> It's just, it, it, if they do a right. if they do a Guild Wars 2 relaunch, then yes, that that is real. If it's a completely new game, there ain't no way they're gonna let like half the player base start <laughs> with at third full base. Bits. Yeah, exactly. No. Yeah, that's, it, makes yeah, no it's sense. not happening. You can't do that. It makes no sense. Like, I that think they could, sense. like all the monitors, they could make some of the skins kind of carry over. But you know what? I actually think even that is actually really weird. Like, if um, I'm just kind of, I'm imagining that I'm a new player, right? And I go, and I look at this new game, and I go, and I, I see a system that says, 
oh yeah, like a bunch of your progress gets carried over into the new game. I would go, bro, what is this? I don't want to, what, what are we doing here? Like, is this game fresh or not, right? Like, I think that would actually potentially be really off-putting. You've got to be a little bit careful with it, I think. There's a reason why Hall mm. of Monuments was, I'm not gonna lie, it was pretty superficial. It was kind of like a, a, a nice thing for veteran players of Guild Wars 1 to have, but it was pretty meaningless, right, at the end of the day. Um, you know, like, I, I know that you could, you could even it get- didn't like, give you to you. Exactly. It didn't give you it, a full exotic meaningless. set at launch. Yeah. Like, it, it wasn't meaningless though. Like it's meaningless to you because of the way that you play MMOs, but it was meaningful to people um, because essentially it's just, it's a way to, to show off their memory, right? To say, hey, I was a part of like the OG players of Guild Wars 1. Or, you know, it, it, so it is actually quite meaningful to players. I've had players ask me, oh, where did you get that glove skin before? And you have this moment where you're like, oh yeah, I get to tell them that I, you know, play Guild Wars One, and I love Guild Wars One. It's a it's a reminder or like a token of um, of playing a game that you loved. Intrinsic value. Yeah, it has yeah. purely intrinsic value. Fair enough. Makes sense to yeah, me. That's meaningful. I mean, it's a good carrot for a lot of players. I mean, we see go that back and titles, play the game. We see that with achievements. We see that with anything. Yeah, it's... Mm. a lot of people do go back and play Guild Wars One purely to get the Hall of Monuments stuff. Yeah, a non-zero amount. I think this does come up in Guild Wars Two a little bit because the thing about Guild Wars Two is that um, the the finish line never moves. This is a really interesting thing about Guild Wars Two. I think that um, like even though the game is most people are never going to get to the finish line. I think what people like about Guild Wars 2 is that the finish line never moves, or that's like a part of it. Like, a new game is basically doing that. Like, the finish line is getting further away because you have to, you know, progress the game over and over again. Like, whereas in Guild Wars 2, like, even if you earn one gold an hour, you're moving very, very slowly towards a final destination, um, essentially, which I, I think that is something that rustles people a little bit about the new game, and I think there will be some animosity about this that kind of pops up it's really interesting actually because you know like I, I feel exactly the opposite one of the things that i don't like about guild wars 2 is that yeah i finished the game i i beat the entire game right i don't i don't want a game that finishes i want an infinite game uh i don't want a finite game but that's you know that's immaterial in this conversation obviously uh of course but yeah that's uh that's the situation it's i'm not i'm not surprised to see people respond in this way and say like listen you better carry over my legendaries or you know i'm well, gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna be mad I go back to what I say earlier. Those people don't matter because it's it's <laughs> it's ten, it's ten thousand of them who are mad versus the million new players who are going to be coming in and don't give a shit. And the million new players have millions of more dollars that they're willing to spend. Yeah. So later, old people that don't want to jump on the bandwagon. See ya. Take it easy. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. That's uh, yeah, that is the wrong. situation. Yeah. yeah, you are not wrong. I mean, it is definitely a big new player thing, right? Like that's what relaunching a new game always is. But I think that is um, one of the things that can be a little bit scary for the you know for the existing player base is that again, yeah, like that statement is very true. It is all about new players, uh, pretty much for new MMOs, which means that you know, like the game could be radically different and maybe not exactly what uh, the current players are exactly looking for. Um, in, in terms yeah. of like what they want out of a game, which is a little bit interesting. But I don't think I don't think it will change that much. I feel like there are some things that there's no way they would move away from in Guild Wars 3. Like, you know, I, for, like the most obvious one is they're not just going to add a sub fee. That would be extremely funny. I would be amused by that. But there's absolutely no shot. Like, they definitely won't do vertical progression either because these are gonna like things that are very iconic to the kind of Guild Wars brand, I would say. So it's not going to be that but also, different. But yeah, I don't know. Also, just on the sub fee thing, that, that, that's never going to happen. Any new MMOs that's launched, that's launched with a sub fee has died almost instantaneously. It yeah. doesn't really fly. Like the the battle pass, that's, that's oh, yeah, optional oh, optional sub oh, fee. God, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. that's the future right there. Yeah. Or at least the current state of things. I mean there's definitely things the that I would imagine that it will be a fully open world game with no like portal zone transitions. That would make sense from a technical standpoint to do. That would be pretty cool. Um 
hopefully it's not set 300 years in the future and it's like a sci-fi game that would be not uh what i'm looking for in my guild wars Ooh. that's for sure yeah that would be a bit weird yeah if that it's like chars with laser guns like we're already we're getting very too close for that already with like you know asura technology where it's like okay everyone's got laser guns now this is this is getting weird i want my my high fantasy please but <laughs> You know what's funny? This clip of Daroya. I think Daroya was. Yeah, I was just watching yeah, it. Th I think th isn't this the clip where you that basically say the game it, the it's like maintenance mode it's... or some shit? Like this actually got posted to the subreddit, by the way. Someone trying there's to start up. There's almost twenty three thousand. Yeah, views yeah, on yeah, this. Yeah, uh, yeah. I'm yeah. like, holy shit. Yeah, like this is a, a very popular clip, and this clip in particular. Um, someone started posted it to the subreddit to basically stir up drama again. Recently, it was very fucking funny, actually. Um, but uh, yeah. Daroya was I'm right, so guys. tan in that fucking video. Yeah. What up? <laughs> and there's MMO inks in that video as well. That really is a yeah. in the past. You know, it's, uh, it's How old, old is school it? stuff. For four years. Four years yeah, ago. Okay. It's an old clip. It really is an old clip. Damn. Uh, yeah, it absolutely is. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. That the, for, the thing yeah. is, I, I, to kind of talk about, some people are asking about sub fee. The problem with a sub fee, guys, is that if you, at the moment you do a sub fee, you put yourself in competition with World of Warcraft. And that's not good. You don't want to do that. Um, because they release a lot of content and your MMO, especially a new one, probably doesn't. Uh, and it, it's, you, you die pretty much. Uh, I, I am inclined to agree that if you, if you make a sub fee MMO, like, holy shit, you better be damn sure of yourself. Uh, because you know, you might just get crushed immediately. Uh, if you, uh, do that. Yeah. The only MMOs that can really pull off is it's 14 and, and wow right now. Um, It'll never happen because they never, no company has ever done this. But the perfect way to do it is to launch your game with six months of future content already done and banked. Yeah. So that like over the first six months after launch, you can like after launch, like you can go, here's our roadmap for the next six months. And it's like riddled with content releases. And people are like, holy shit, they're actually developing this game. You know, you give yourself like that six month buffer of content that you already know is done and polished and just needs to be like launched. But Every game launches, like with like you know, paint on the runway. The yeah, it's it's every game launches paint on the runway, like features incomplete because there's no way that they're gonna get six months of banked content. But that's the way to do it. So maybe Anet would. I mean, think about that it. would that would be an absolutely amazing scenario to witness. I I don't ever see that happen just simply because of the I mean investors. They're going to want the game out as fast as possible. And good luck convincing anyone to put in six months extra worth of content. Like the work of that into a, a non-proven product. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah, that that's is... like the, the non-proven part is the issue. Like, because I feel like well, they, didn't that kind of happen with Path of Fire? Like with Path of Fire, they dropped Path of Fire. Then like two months later, season four happened. So there, <laughs> there is, <laughs> it, it, was less, it was less than two months even actually. It was like immediate. Uh, and yeah, I, I realize there is a certain irony in referencing that era of the game, seeing as that was basically when they were completely winding it down and preparing to actually unironically kill it. Uh, but you know, it's it's not impossible. Uh, it's not impossible to do that. I, I feel like it's not necessarily like you have to like shut down Guild Wars Two, but there is like a sort of like you know Pizarro landing in the New World and burning his boats because there's no going back, like. If they do Guild Wars 3 and it's a fully fledged new AAA MMO and it flops, the company, like, Anet is done. Like, <laughs> oh, they boy. can't survive that. You, yeah. you can't, they can't survive spending probably 10 to $20 million on a game that doesn't make money. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So if, if Guild Wars 3 comes out and it fails, Guild Wars 2 is dead too because it's, it's, Paul, it's not like they're going to go, oh, well, Guild Wars 3 failed. We're going to go back mm. to Guild Wars 2. No, it's, it's NCSoft goes, oh, yeah. you, you have failed us. We're selling the building. <laughs> like, see ya. <laughs> Get your stuff out. <laughs> yeah. I, th this is why I have been on record saying, when people talk about these products, it is not Guild Wars 3. It will not be Guild Wars 3. Because to me, the idea of it is just so insanely risky. It's a um, gamble. It's, it's a humongous a gamble. gamble. And it goes contrary to everything that ArenaNet is doing. Everything ArenaNet is doing right now is safe, 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 safe. And you know what, by the way? I'm not, that's not a roast. That's a compliment. I think ArenaNet have been clowning around with the goddamn dev budget over the last like five years or so. Yeah. And there's a reason why they got laid off. I hate to say it, guys. 
I'm going to be a little bit callous and heartless, but yeah, they, they kind of burned like millions and millions and did fuck all, right? Like, <laughs> that's basically what happened, right? Yeah, they played super, super risky and they got punished. And like three, uh, you know, studio directors later, here we are and we're playing it a lot safer. Um, which to me is like, yeah, that makes sense to me. Like, that's why I did not see Guild Wars 3 coming whatsoever. And I was like, nope, they're not doing that. It's because they're playing it very, very safe with their, their new business model which is something that I've praised a lot because I think it makes a lot of sense. It's a good business strategy. Uh, and Guild Wars 3 is giga risky. It is like, yeah, if this fails, this is bad. This is like re really, really bad. And, you know, obviously this is, I'm going to put the pure speculation label on this next statement because I want to be really clear about this. This is why I think that, man, I'm not sure if this is something that came from Anet. Like, it really makes me think, is this NC doing the thing where they're like, oh, look, Lineage 2 worked out really well. We should do Guild Wars 3. <laughs> let's go like, that's kind of like the, the read that i would have on it um you know immediately uh, dude that cfo I, I guy was yeah, getting yeah. freaking grilled by that reporter yeah the journalist they're hard that journalist right? was brutal, asking yeah. was not tossing yeah, yeah, softballs yeah. the journalist is like uh you've been in the job eight years and lost money every year why are you still here and the guy was like having to justify his existence and so he's like <laughs> uh uh good wars three <laughs> <laughs> like that was like what he had to do to like keep it was his under fucking pressure. job. Well, yeah, he was sweating bullets. Well, he like, threw the grenade. <laughs> yeah, it, it was like the the title was really accurate of the article. It was it was like hostile shareholder meeting, right? Like, it was hostile. Was there? <laughs> yeah, because it absolutely was. <laughs> Yeah, that guy, was like, that guy was like for him, a drowning right? person reaching for anything, <laughs> yeah. and he grabbed onto Guild Wars Three and pulled yeah, yeah. himself back up. <laughs> It's it breaking really case of well, emergency. Though. I mean, well, I, I guess so. Yeah. Honestly, like, it could have been. It could have been exactly that. Just like trying to get out of a sticky situation yeah. with no real hold in the. Oh yeah. In what you're saying. Yeah, what what I mean, if that? What if that was the inception of Guild Wars Three? You know, Grouch wakes up. That would be up, fucking insane. Grouch oh wakes up and he hears things. Wait, we're, do <laughs> we're doing what? We're working on what? <laughs> well. <we're... laughs> I, what's going on here? I don't know what, what this is. Like, <laughs> Be pretty funny. We'll, we'll never know, guys. You know, we're uh, no. we're never gonna know. Now we know what we'll Colin does behind all the day. scenes. <laughs> it's good content. Yeah. It is good content. But yeah, I, mean, I, don't, I don't know where we're really going with this. Like, where are we? Uh, where are we uh, Snab, say something. Bring us content, Snab. You know, oh, I can do that. Do yeah. it. Guild Wars Three. Yeah. <laughs> we know nothing about it, and all the people that are complaining. I, I hate to tell you, but you need to go outside. Ooh. You gotta hit the gym, Ooh. go outside, go to the grocery store, take a deep breath. We don't know anything about Guild Wars 3, so there's really no reason to be upset. Well, know is the game has not happen. been... Yeah, it hasn't been announced. It's just been uh, mentioned. Mm. Yeah. Take a yeah. chill pill. Guild Wars I wish that guy had said Guild Wars Mobile instead. I Ooh. wish he had said Guild Wars Mobile. <laughs> <laughs> that, what, would that have made a bigger outcry from the community or a smaller outcry from the community if he had said I Guild mean, Wars last, Mobile? Worse. That last, time way worse. Thought, last time we thought that there was going to be a Guild Wars Mobile. Do you remember that time? Oh, I yeah. mean, everything, everything was burning. Yeah. yeah say it full force now. That would have been some big content, actually. You know, like, I mean, uh, yeah. if NCSoft knows how to do anything, it's make a mobile game. So uh, oh, maybe yeah. they could actually get That's that. That's where all the money is. Happen. I, you know, make like, slightly differently, though, of course, like, there's, I think with Unreal, there's a very distinct possibility of console and that the game might be designed with console in mind uh, to an extent. I mean, it's easy money. If, if you can yeah. port it cheaply, it's easy money. Well, that makes me angry because the thing is, you know how it always goes? It's always the other way around. You design it with the console in mind, then you make the shitty PC port. Uh, I think they, that probably True. wouldn't do that for an MMO, to be honest. I think that's mostly like a, I guess, kind of like an RPG thing that happens a lot, unfortunately. But yeah, if I have to see one more in-game menu that's very clearly designed with console in mind, and I'm, I'm uh, well, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be Just mildly segre upset. Segregate, okay? that's what segregate the console gamers from the humans, yeah. because <laughs> I don't want them in my group. I don't. They can't be there. It's not good. Wow. Wow. It's a bit Very inclusive. Yeah. I mean, has any console player in any feel... game ever had good DPS? Yeah. No, it's not happened. Do so. you do you want yeah. that with a action cam, like a new different server for action cam players? Just yeah, yeah. true. Yeah, a quarantine zone. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I mean that's 
That's quite the statement. You know, I've got, I've, I've actually got an interesting story about that. I okay, do it, do it. Let's so, go. you know, the conversation we always have with action cam, which is that, Hey, you know, if it's an accessibility thing, probably a, a good thing. You know, if you're just trying to chill and whatever, and you like the way it plays more power mm -hmm. to you, but if you're focused purely on your own improvement and you have a choice, mm. it's probably not the best option. Well, I, I've said that a few times and people have been really upset. Like they start arguing with me and arguing and I'm just like, hey, I mean, take it or leave it. I've had a few people come back later, like a year later or mm. two years later. They go, hey, remember that thing that you said? And I was really upset and I like stormed out, out of the, the chat kind of thing. You were right. You were definitely right, but I did not want to be wrong. So sorry about that. It's, it's come full circle. It's, I love when it's, people admit they're wrong. Not, oh, the not best, that they were wrong, but that they admit oh, to themselves and everyone. Just You will honestly. love this one then, Devor. You will love this one. Oh, okay, Teapot, you might have to help me because it's been a long time. Okay. But Teapot and I, I think we were talking about like making your own group and KP. That's like, you know, a common thing. And some Daily guy in the YouTube. Yeah. yeah, some guy in the YouTube comments just popped off on me and was like super pissed off and telling me I don't understand and blah, 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 blah. I think specifically we're talking about how it, it kind of contributes to commander fatigue. Like if you can't play with people that have similar um, expectations and goals and whatever. Yeah. This guy, like three to six months later, he comes back to that comment and that like back and forth conversation. And he says... I just want you to know that I was wrong and that you were 100% correct. <laughs> and he's like, I have been leading pug groups for the last three to six months. And I want you to know that it is horrible that people lie to you all the time. And that I understand now, I understand why people do this. It was, I think it, I, I just, I replied back. I was like, dude, like, this is this is a dead thread, but massive respect for for coming back here and saying something. Jeez, it, it's a beautiful cool. thing when people I, are willing cool, to yeah. admit that they've like learned something. Um, I agree. Yeah, cool. One hundred percent. That's cool, actually. Yeah. Yeah. This is also yeah. the ultimate commander arc, where you complain about all the commanders, and then you become the complainer. Yeah. Or no, th then you become the commander. <laughs> you become the new one, yeah. And then you complain about the complainers. Like, yeah. it just goes in the, the circle. The leeches. Yeah. Yeah. The infestation of leeches. You know, this is completely tangential. But, have leeches? You know, would you, would you be interested to know, Snub, that um, the classic WoW community is almost identical um, to the Guild Wars 2 community in this regard? Like, there is a constant all-out bloodbath war between people who say um you should invite me even though i pass gray and people who say no i will not invite you if you pass gray and i'm going to check your logs and if you don't have the right gear from the dungeons i will not invite you right like there is a constant war between these two um groups of players it's very similar to um Guild Wars 2, actually. It's almost identical. Uh, I, I, I actually think that the demographics of, of players who play these two games is very similar, actually. Um, because in retail, wow, that's solved. If you say, uh, I'm 1k rating and I'm not getting into 3k groups, people will actually just cyber bully you and make fun of you, right? Like, they've solved it there. They don't that's not really an issue. But in Classic, it's exactly the opposite. Um, there's still this constant battlefield going on. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see where Guild Wars 3 lands on this. You know, Guild Wars 3, it shouldn't launch with a DPS meter. It should launch with a CC meter. It should launch with, like, a Let's fully go. fledged stat system. Oh, yeah. That would be a really interesting idea uh, if, if an MMO actually had something like that. You know, because, I mean... Don't people like that kind of thing? You know, in, in like old games, you'd get like an S ranking if you cleared the, you know, like the, the level fast enough or you did it well, didn't get hit and stuff like that. I was mean, kind of cool, right? Guild Wars 2's entire Mike O'Brien inspired yeah. vision yeah. was like obfuscating people's individual contributions as much as humanly possible mm. and, and trying to make it completely opaque 
to who's doing what and how. Um, you know, I, I think I think this is kind of funny actually because now we're getting into like weekly discussion about this. But I really feel like systems like that tend to massively backfire, like they have in Guild Wars Two. It leads to just like confusion about player performance, which leads to players refusing to engage in public, which leads to uh, ironically a huge amount of I wouldn't say gatekeeping, but barrier to entry like the players erect a barrier it's not even the players doing it on purpose by the way like nobody's doing anything wrong it's that players if you can't figure out like experience level in game players won't use the in-game systems like they they really won't like they'll use external systems and, and you know go to private groups and so on and people won't engage publicly which is exactly what happens in guild wars 2 so i always feel like systems like that like horrifically backfire uh, to be honest. And I think Guild Wars 2 is kind of the case study on that, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, that's why y you just launch with the systems in the game. That way the people who are, you know, given anxiety by those systems just opt out at launch and you don't have them in the community anymore to worry about. <laughs> I think you're quickly going to go from that 1 million new players to <clears throat> maybe a third of that. Okay. I mean, that's fine for me. I'm not paying <laughs> yeah. the bills. Not true. But it still has to succeed. And yeah. inclusion is usually a It's got to be good enough to keep the lights on an A-net, but, like, keep that yeah. Korean man sweating. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, the, what, do, what do we think about this idea that um, Guild Wars 3, uh, you know, because this is something that, you know, Delph is talking about this a lot in the chat. What do we, what do we think about the, the idea that it either won't be an MMO or it will be a relaunch. I feel like it, it, how could it not be an MMO? Like that's, that, that to me is insane. Like you wouldn't but, call, maybe but, Guild Wars 2 is like actually, a placeholder name or something like that, maybe? Oh um, no, I do have a thought. I have a thought. Yeah. Do you remember it was months and months and months ago where there was some leak that they were working on a card game? Yeah. Yeah. What if they're this. all connected? There's no way Guild Wars 3 is a card game. It's all gonna be <laughs> the same. <laughs> yeah. Oh, please don't. That would be the, yeah. the Hall of Monuments is just you getting some. Like, oh, I got my Ritlock. Cool. I'm gonna tap my mana, cast my Ritlock. Like, oh <laughs> Could be. You never know. But it it would on in all seriousness, it would be ridiculous to to think that it's not an MMO. Uh, they would. They just wouldn't call it Guild Wars Three. They would just call it Guild Wars and then a card game or Guild Wars. The MOBA. I'd be like Tyria right? the card game or something like that. Like, mm. But I mean, it, 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 it could be. It's not like the official name is GW3, right? Yeah, I mean, then again, Guild Wars 1 and Guild Wars 2 were two it. different genres. It's not like they were the same genre. So. Yeah, fair. Fair. They yeah, can change they, genres. They were radically different. And, you know, that, that would making a game that is radically different would make sense right like especially if they wanted to continue guild wars 2 because if you let, let's imagine that um they do guild wars 3 and they'd be say yo look at our new mmo it's got open world meta events and it's got world versus world that would actually be weird in a, in a way right wouldn't it because you'd be saying well you're competing with yourself at this point. So it would yeah. make sense if the game was actually radically different in some way. But I think that's, it's yeah. very difficult to actually do that, like given the breadth of the types of content in, that exists in, in Guild Wars 2. Um, I mean, they could easily do it. They just got to promote me from community manager to oh, yeah. game director, and mm. I would be able to take care of like, the direction of, of the game for them. Easy peasy. Well, like, what, what would that look like? Right, like, what would an MMO like? What could you do in Guild Wars Three that would be completely distinct from Guild Wars Two, or or wouldn't have too much overlap with Guild Wars Two? You know, the meme is I think Sneb brought this up actually, and, and, he, and I think it was being you know well, this wasn't a joke by the way that we were talking about this very seriously. Um, you know, what comes to mind is a kind of a very non-combat MMO like social experience, like something like Palia, right? Which is kind of I, I don't I think Sneb knows a bit more about the game than me, but it's kind of uh but yeah how tell, well is that game actually doing tell me snab what is uh, that game i think um essentially the game is like a cooperative mmorpg where you ju you don't like fight you just like build stuff and work that sounds like a do. micro brian production all day yeah a anyways i don't know a lot about it um spoiler alert they didn't want me in their beta i, I tried to get into it because i wanted to see what it was about but i, I did not get in <laughs> and um 
they launched? I, 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 I don't know. I, I thought that they had like some betas and stuff. I the last I haven't heard much about it recently. I actually do question if it's still doing well or not, but there was a lot of hype about it when it first announced because it's all the things that more casual oh. players actually uh, hmm, casual it's, isn't the right word. There's, there's people that have, don't really launch just like a few days ago. Yeah, it, it's a social <laughs> MMO. Pe people like the, just to kind of hang out and sit huh. back and like dress their character up and do some tasks, but they, they don't really care about being particularly skillful. Sounds familiar. They, they, in other words, they don't want to express skill in combat necessarily. So it's maybe a bit slower in that way, but I, I don't know specifically about Palia. So when I said that stuff about Guild Wars 2, what I was really trying to say is, you know, we're not really utilizing Guild Wars 2's combat system to the fullest extent in many ways. Uh, when I say we, I mean the general community. I don't mm. think people do. I think people like the combat system because of how it feels, how fluid it is. But I don't think they like everything that's wrapped up in it. I think many people think there's too many stat lines. I think a lot of people don't understand the stats. I think a lot of people don't understand the gear systems. In other words, it's just very complicated for people. And so you do have to wonder, how much are they really, really willing to invest in something like a, a combat system that's exactly the same as Guild Wars 2? Like, why, why would they do that when the majority of the people that play the game do not engage with it at all? And then um, there were some numbers by a member of the community on Reddit that were like less than a thousand people have gotten to it was forty or fifty percent on Sarah's CM. So are they really going to make a game for less than a thousand people? In some ways, you have to question those things, right? I, I think there are other How ways. How complicated can... do they want to make it? I think there are some other things, other ways it can pay off though. And, and I, I definitely think you're right with the complexity, right? I think that, I think MMOs in general are a bit over the top. You know, when you, when you're loading up your talent tree for your build in, in, you know, in, in all these games, right? It's like, you've got like 17 different interweaving effects. Yeah, that's probably a little bit unnecessary. Let's be honest. Uh, I think it doesn't, you know, we, we could probably trim down on that a little bit, but on the other hand, um, I think we talked about this before, and I, I'll say the same thing again. I, I think that in a way, I think players can really enjoy messing around with a complex system, even if they don't understand it. I think there is some inherent joy in kind of picking all these different little bonuses that your character has. I think that in and of itself is actually quite fun, even if you don't really understand it. You know, just you know, building up your character, right, and, and choosing all these different little components. I think that's something that players really enjoy, um, even if they don't necessarily understand it. And I, I will actually say this as well. I think the amount of people, especially new players, who suffer from these complex systems is not as high as you might think. I think there's this idea that new player joins the game and goes, wow, this is way too complicated. I don't understand and, and I quit. And I think that does happen 100%. But I think most of the time people go, yo, I pressed a button and it summoned a giant fireball. This is sick. Uh, and that I think that's actually a more common new player MMO response, I think. I, I think that most people don't, actually care that much if they don't understand the system like unless that it blocks them from progress i think one of the reasons why people do bounce off a little bit more in guild wars 2 is because of the lack of difficulty settings i think and probably some bad transparency when it comes to gearing i think gearing is something that people struggle with in guild wars a lot because there's a million stats and they're all you know half of them are worthless that really doesn't help uh but i don't know i i think you can have a complicated game uh, and it still be fun to mess around with for new players, as long as you kind of enable that, right? Like you enable it by having difficulty settings for content if you want to make difficult content, uh, and you make it so that you know you can you can kind of just get through it, like even if you don't know what the hell's going on. Like I always say, that it's absolutely strange to me how people seem to come to an MMO and have never played a game with RPG elements in it before. Like, if you've played, a, like, any Zelda game, like, nothing should be unfamiliar to you, you know, when you get to, like, Guild Wars 2. Even though they're not very similar, like, at all, like, between Zelda and Guild Wars 2, but at least the whole 
like concept of character progression and RPG elements should be familiar to you. So when you join an MMO, you know vaguely that there's going to be some sort of character progression and 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 like systems. I don't know. It it seems to me crazy to think that people don't expect that. Like like if you join an MMO and you're like, hey, this is complicated. It's like, yeah, that's what you signed up for. That's what the genre is. Like what what did you think it was did you think it's what it was... the genre was i don't know that it's what the genre even is anymore well the problem uh, I, is we think... don't know what the genre is because every new mmo that's come out since guild wars 2 or final fantasy has been like half digested garbage so we don't know what a good mmo looks like you know what allow me to actually simp for everyone's favorite mmo new world um because i i you know <laughs> I know I kind of slightly said that it doesn't matter when Sneb raised that issue, but there's another part of me, and maybe even the part that I agree with the most that actually fully agrees with this. I do think that uh, the future of games, uh, and when it comes to MMOs, is a little bit of a easy-to-learn, hard-to-master thing. And I actually think you can have a game that has a massive skill ceiling and can be incredibly difficult to play and really kind of appeal to players who do want to engage mechanically. But you can also have it in such a way that it is simpler uh, and with nice. fewer interlocking components. And I think that's actually what New World did really well. Um, is That's not what people want from um, RPGs. People want power <sighs> fantasy. They want to get the plus one sword so they can go into a deeper dungeon and kill another monster and get mm. the plus two sword. And that way they can go into a deeper dungeon and kill mm -hmm. another monster and get a plus three sword. Mm -hmm. That's what people want. And that's old school RuneScape is exactly is. that. It's exactly that. Yeah, old I mean, I, I, I mean, I, I guess so. Uh, I mean, there definitely was some like gear min maxing in, in New World, right? You had basically upgrades you could attach that was a lot going on there, right? Um, and, you know, there, there was a lot of customization of what you could do, uh, for sure. And uh, to be clear, the, the game is not what you know the, the game is obviously didn't really work out um super well overall but i think there are some really interesting ideas that games could learn from because i think one thing that was really good about new world was the fact that you have uh light attack heavy attack block dodge and then you have you had three weapons and you could pick two pick one of two trees from each weapon mix and match all of that away you go it's down to two weapons now as well so it's even simpler uh, than it used to be originally that's a really cool idea uh and by the way the game was very skill sensitive there was this guy actually a british guy too actually called the duelist uh who was really good at the game in the beta and he would 1v1 people who were bis maxed out gear at level one um with level one wooden sword and he would win very consistently um at this and in fact you know what's actually really funny um in response to feedback, they actually prevented you from doing this. The game was actually too skill sensitive, funnily enough. Uh, that's one of the reasons why they removed Stagger, and they actually made it so level scaling kind of prevented you from doing that nearly as much. Because people complained about it. Funnily enough, streamers complained about it. Like, I'm sorry, guys. It wasn't me, but uh, yeah. People complained about this. People did not like the fact that you lost to level one with wooden sword, basically. Uh, pretty much. <laughs> so they, they changed it. I'm telling you, people want yeah. plus one sword and to do more. If they get a sword that's 10% yeah. better, they want to do 10% more damage than the guy who doesn't have it. That's that's what they want. Yeah. And you can say there's like an, an outdated experience, yeah. but that people are playing these games for the power yeah. fantasy. And I, I don't know. I, I feel like you have to feed that. Yeah, I mean, that is that is kind of the MMO thing, right? Like, people like it when the number goes up, um, to be honest. So, yeah. Stagger was not bad in New World, by the way. Removing Stagger was a mistake. Um, what Did it did it probably add a really big barrier to entry to the game? Yes, and it's very different. So, was it a mechanic that would have probably killed the game? M maybe, uh, <laughs> to be honest. But Stag removing Stagger actually made the combat significantly worse in New World. That is a take I a million percent stand by, uh, to be honest. I think, sta you know, that was one of the things that pushed me away from the game is that the combat became worse when they removed Stagger and they also removed animation canceling. That, oh, 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 okay, well, yeah, whatever. Um, yeah, that's uh, that's unfortunate. But I'm not well, I'm not doing the new world debate, guys. Okay. Um, if you can die level, listen. Listen, these guys no, play, I, yeah. Teapot wants to play Smash Brothers. 
but with an MMO. Yes. Yeah. That's what you want. That's your game. Yeah. <laughs> Leave me out of it. <laughs> yeah. I like big numbers. Yeah. If you I can like die to level time. one wooden sword, why even put time to leveling and getting gear? Well, I mean, look, for the same reason that you get gear in Guild Wars 2, even though if you go in World vs. Wood in full green gear, you can honestly own people. There's even a guild that does that, by the way. I think that I can't remember their guild tag, but there's a guild in World vs. World that they only use green gear and that all their characters are green. They like have like green infusions on and stuff like that. I mean, for the same reason, like, yeah, can you like own people in green gear? Absolutely, but you can own people even harder if you use ascended, right? Like, I don't know. It's it is what it is. Uh, but yeah, it is what it is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Honestly, the best time I ever had in Guild Wars Two World v World was right at launch when I had full full uh, exotic gear and everyone else had like green gear, and you could just like destroy people, like hordes of people, mm. like like me and three people who have all had exotic gear could like just go into World v World and just like take on like you know huge outnumbered fights because of the gear disparity and that it was actually like fun stomping. it was actually fun maybe if not for them but maybe that would encourage them to get better gear probably did <laughs> yeah it yeah. is difficult i think um you know the MMOs are in a weird spot in terms of design, right? Because I think new MMOs do try to innovate a little bit and bring something new to the table, but then it fails, right? Uh, and then people go back to the the old old stuff, right? Uh, and you know whether whether where the number goes up, it's yeah, it's very difficult. And I I think that it's very difficult because um, MMOs are they're not a dead genre, obviously, because there's there's millions of people who play them. But on the same the, the same vein there, I do feel like a lot of people who play MMOs, it's like the same bubble of people, if that makes any sense. I feel like l it's not a group of people online that there's loads of new players, like loads of new Zoomers getting into MMOs. I think there are some. You you see Zoomers in retail wow, well, um, a little bit, I think. Um but to be fair, that game is pretty zoomery, like with the way it plays. It's like very much like go in, go out, twenty minute adventure, uh, kind of thing. Like you know, for you know all that kind of stuff. Um, but it, we, it, we I think it, see, that's a... I think it's hard to introduce new ideas to the MMO audience because of how kind of ingrained everyone is, and and like everyone's like, yeah, this is what I like, and this is what MMOs are. So I, I think it's really difficult to create something new in the space that isn't kind of get to get it spat out a little bit by the existing player base of, of like who, who plays mmos the other thing is like on one hand mmos have been around you know for 30 years roughly mm. but that sounds like a really long time but also it's not so long that we know what things are going to look like 30 years from now um, 30 years from now, the people who are playing EverQuest and, and Ultima online, they're going to be dead <laughs> like, or, or not, you know, they're going to be like in old nursing homes, like, like they're not going to be gaming. So will people who are now zoomers and don't want to play, uh, you know, old slow paced MMOs when they turn 35, are they going to start playing MMOs? Maybe like it might just be that MMOs are a game genre that you pick up in your late 20s you don't you don't pick up until your late 20s and and you go and you play it to like you know you're whenever you're in your 50s or whatever and it could just very well be that that's the pattern that games fall into yeah but we don't know we have no Maybe idea it'll just remain uh only relevant to our generation and it'll just keep moving until we yeah. hit retirement. Yeah, everyone's age literally and, uh, dead. Yeah. And it's this the <laughs> moment that we're all dead. That's the <laughs> that's, that's the, end. the moment that the That's MMO when the server shuts dies. down. <laughs> well, it's like they say, like how long isn't there like a, a date where more people on Facebook will be dead than than people oh, who boy. are alive? Holy like shit. there'll be there'll be, oh there'll be more accounts oh of people God. that have passed away than accounts of people that are alive. Oof. And it's like not far in the future. So like based on like their their growth or lack of growth, like and the and the demographics uh, of the world changing. But mm. pretty pretty soon most you know, World of Warcraft within a, within a hundred years, most World of Warcraft accounts will be owned by dead people. <laughs> the, the estates yeah. of dead people than than living oh. people. 
And I, I think that, you know, we have exhausted the, the Guild Wars 3 discussion more or less here at this point, actually. Uh, but I, I think there's nothing more to add at least. Yeah, there, there's, kind of, there's, there's kind of one more thing that I think we can kind of use to round off the conversation, maybe round off the show as well, um, is, is the following. Like, do we feel that the hand of NC and ArenaNet is going to be forced here a little bit in terms of communicating what's going on? Because we have had a statement from ArenaNet. It's basically, I'm not going to lie, it's a bit of a non-statement. It's basically like, oh yeah, we're focused on Guild Wars 2 and of course we're working on other projects, but we can't say anything now. Fair enough. Oh, you know, boy. I get that. You know, that makes a lot of sense, right? Uh, and, um, you know, that's, that's basically what we've got at this point. Do we think that this kind of scuffed announcement is going to kind of lead to anything else or are they just going to say you know what it'll probably blow over because it hasn't blown up a huge amount i want to say like it, it's not yeah, like everywhere it, it's gonna it's it's a this, pr- this could easily blow over yeah easily blow over because if it would have if it would have already blown up it would have happened by now mm. it would have happened a few days ago it was like now it's like yeah whatever we're all it, i mean is anyone really dooming and glooming and like that much I don't think, I think so. I was saying no. that before we started that there's no news and there's not going to be any more information. So once you like vent on Reddit and get your, your magis out, <laughs> there's nothing else to say. Like, mm. are you still going to be sa- repeating the same two sentences that you like uh, three weeks from now? No, you're going to move. Yeah, you're going to life's going to go back to normal till there's more info. And more I mean, yeah, be years the away. community does have a. But, uh, a history of com- uh, just uh, I will say if like itself. if like the content that they release from now on has to be good because at that the default position if they release like a bad patch or a bad fractal or a bad this or not even bad but like low effort people are gonna go oh this is low effort because of guild they're they're shifting their attention to guild wars three yeah it's gonna be and the scapegoat yeah. right yeah that's gonna yeah. be the yeah. scapegoat and yeah. you don't want that because it just will make the community miserable. Yeah, it's the yeah, main mode memes over again. <laughs> when Teapot and I chatted the other day, I was saying that I thought their hand was kind of forced to say something. But I actually, as time has gone on, my perspective has changed. I don't think that they will necessarily be forced to say anything. And if they do say anything, I don't think it needs to be super big. I think they can be like, oh, yeah, you know what? Beans are spilled. Um, we are considering working on stuff like this and looks like it has been greenlit. So that might be something we do, but we'll, we're just recommitting to Guild Wars 2. This is what we've got going on in the future and see Interia. We're just done. I don't, I don't think they, that it's actually that huge of a deal anymore. Uh, and the, the Doom take on that is I don't, think that the, I don't think that the game is really in a like hyper popularity phase right now where everyone is playing constantly and there's like a ton of content so honestly you could just like fast forward a month and nobody will remember this so yeah i i think it'll just blow over yeah if, if, the, now, like, if this was like two weeks fractal. after an expansion i think you'd be in big trouble right because there's just like so many people that just bought the thing and you know oh and the game's already gonna die like i think that that might be a bit what if what if this worse. news had leaked like a week before the expansion and just like completely savagely undercut their pre-order sales like that would be uh, that would have hurt that would have been bad timing yeah that would have been very, very rough. Uh, but fortunately, and you know, it might have like some kind of minor effect on it, I guess. But I think it will be pretty insignificant because, you know, I, I think, yeah, people will have forgotten. We're going to be hearing about pre-order for next expansion, uh, I guess, in about two and a half months, probably. Because I think the next... Uh, when does the next patch drop? Let me just check in game, actually. Because, um, look, uh, yeah, yeah, the Anut special thing, like the Wizard's Vault special tab, it tells you when the next patch comes out. It's coming out in 44 days. So we probably hear about pre-order like a month after that ish that we announced the next expansion a little bit after the final update. They could even I could even imagine them doing it on the same day, right? Like you know, or, or very very shortly after. Can you know you just finished Soto? Oh, next expansion. Oh, let's go. Um, that could definitely happen too. But yeah, I think it's it's just just out of range enough. Like if it you know if it had happened on the same day, that would have been a little bit rough. Um, and you know what? You know what is also big. It happened so close to April first. 
that there are i get this a lot in, in, in on the stream people come into the stream and say wait was it a joke is it is it a meme right like it's actually crazy like you know the april first things may be working out in their favor because people don't think it's real uh in the same way that you know people are very confused if uh nike is the community manager for guild wars 2 or not like they just don't know <laughs> right why, like, why, what's the yeah. confusion yeah i mean i mean <laughs> i mean I, why is anyone confused? i can't possibly say i don't know why anyone could be confused about that that uh you know i just don't understand. i can't wait for the official announcement tomorrow yeah, yeah. Right? <laughs> 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 yeah. Guild Wars 3 pre-order. Like, I mean, look, that's that's honestly the only reason I'm hyped. Uh, everyone knows I don't like Guild Wars 2, but you know what I do like? I do like people uh, pre-ordering the game <laughs> using my referral link. Like, I do like that. I'll, uh, <laughs> I'll give you that one. Especially, look, I've already heard, guys, that um, the Guild Wars 3 is going to be a full price $60 game on launch with a potential $200 Ultimate Extreme Edition. And I know you guys are going to be buying that, okay? Like, I know you guys are going to be clicking that referral link I'm buying that right now. So you honestly, about the one thousand dollar gold edition. Oh wait, wait, what is that leaked yet? The one thousand dollar gold edition, Guild Wars Three Gold. Yeah. Holy shit! Yeah, it's just and like uh, yeah, a few gold Part flakes sprinkled in there. Partners get a uh, percentage of people's sub fees on a recurring oh, monthly basis. Yes. <laughs> Let's go! Very good. Yeah, if you sub using Teapot's referral yeah. link every month, like two dollars of your sub fees going right to Teapot. <laughs> Yeah. Could you imagine yeah. how lucrative that would be? Oh my god. You know, you know what's funny? Uh, Ashes was running something like that. It got shut down yeah. because the game didn't exist. But the original um, referral link scheme for Ashes of Creation was basically a multi-level marketing thing because... That well, seems bad. That seems yeah, really bad. Yeah, <laughs> it's... Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it was like a full MLM scheme, right? Like you could send people out and so. refer them. Yeah, yeah, you 100% yeah, could. Yeah. I want like, to build my downstream. Oh, do they have a multi-level? <laughs> Uh, it might not have been multi-level actually. It, I, I don't think it, it was multi-level. It might have been sing it might have been single level actually, but it was it was <laughs> definitely you send the link out and then you get a cut of any purchase they make in the um in the store. In uh, perpetuity, right? Yeah, it, yeah, but, yeah, but it may not have been um it may not have been multi-level. You're right. They should um, have done it multi-level. That's insane though. Yeah. What a deal. You could be yeah. like the world's first billionaire because you got like the very first referral link. Yeah, and it just funnels down. You get a cut of everyone. Yeah, you get a cut yeah, of everyone yeah, yeah, yeah. downstream <laughs> to like five degrees of separation. Yeah, I mean, we need that in Guild Wars too. We we need um, creator codes, right, for the cash shop, for the gem store. Like, you know, buy a Copperfed Salvage yeah. Matic. Don't mind yet. Imagine how Please silly do. the whole... If we had that, Josh would yeah. still be here. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Well, I mean, we got Twitch drops. I think that's something that he uh, he wanted. Yeah. He wanted he, the Twitch drops. Campaign for that. Yeah, and we got that. It's uh, they added it to the game. He, you know, he died. He died to give us. What do Twitch you think drops. about the Twitch drops? Um, and didn't they do one somewhat recently with Saris, right? They did, yeah, but it was it, it was lame. It was it, it, it was they're just adding. It was like yeah, it was like a merchant and a TP, like one Nobody use. Cares. I think what's happened there is that um it's probably not that cost efficient for them to do that uh, i think they probably looked at the numbers and realized that it doesn't really grow the twitch scene uh it, it it grows it for like a week and then it goes back to where it was and numbers in general have declined quite a lot since soto releases especially streaming actually like streaming is it's pretty dead to be honest for, for guild wars so i'm not gonna i'm not gonna be about the bush like a lot of streamers have, have quit like youtube's still going on there youtube's lower i think um significantly less people making stuff but twitch is pretty dead to be honest in terms of creators so i think arena probably looked at it and went like ah maybe not super cost efficient here i could imagine doing some big stuff for expansions because I, I that will be good right because when they do an expansion launch uh they might throw a twitch front page in it, like they did with soto you know what's really funny? They gave Twitch front page for the tunnel. That was fucking funny as well. Um, maybe not the best choice of uh, allocating resources, but you give, yeah. You give, give people like a, a mount skin at mm. X-Pack launch, but make it like a big time yeah. investment. So they're just like frothing for it. Yeah. Yeah, so I, it's that, that's why they probably didn't like break the bank on it because yeah. if they give away something like a bag slot, you know, that's you know they're giving away gems there, and they're probably not getting the return they're looking for. Uh, to be honest, uh, in terms of like new players being attracted because of the Twitch viewership, or just you know kind of building a a, a bigger presence online, I I really don't think. If I'm being honest, guys, I know a lot of people like to pretend that um you know streamers control the game. I I do I always love it when someone like leaves a comment somewhere that says that like oh yeah Teapot and his gang like control Guild Wars two. I, I mean, we do, just don't leak that. But um, 
I don't think it's really that important from Anet from a marketing perspective. Their target demographic is not on Twitch, let's be honest. Uh, they're not on YouTube either, really. Uh, they're on Facebook. <laughs> nah, nah, not really. Um, but No, yeah. no, really. No, yeah. really. Oh, you think so? Have you, you think... Seen, have you seen how big the Facebook groups are? Uh, I mean, how big are they? They're frightening, too. They're the opinions extremely are frightening. huge. Yeah. Everything we said here would send them into a, a, a literal panic. Mm, fear. Just, yeah. They're, they're massive, Teapot. Like, there, there are multiple Facebook pages with tens of thousands of, mm. of followers. Multiple. Okay. So Yeah, Jill Adrian yeah. always mentions that he's got, like, 45,000 Facebook followers. Can only imagine wow. how, how he got that. <laughs> wow. Is that a cat? No, it's a dog. <laughs> Yes, it's a cat. I, I couldn't tell. Its head was down. I was like, it's just a little fluff ball. <laughs> he is very fluffy. Yes. Yeah. Like, I can pop off about the Twitch drops. Um, I actually think it is... I, I think the Twitch drops are only a positive thing if, A, the drops are actually worth the investment. Mm. B, the content that you're trying to promote is good and um substantive if you put out content okay if you put out a drop that takes like eight hours to get but the content that you added on that patch only takes four hours to do uh that looks really weird when all the streamers complete it in a few hours it, it looks really weird because then you've got all these streamers that are like oh the, the story is done <laughs> it was like one hour and, and now all of all, like 10,000 people are just watching you go, oh, I've ran out of things to do on this patch. Uh, like, then what do you do? Uh, I, think it, I think it makes the game look very poor. So I think they should save the budget to do like a big thing every once in a while, whether that's once a year, twice a year. I don't know, but I wouldn't do it every patch. I don't think every patch is working out. I don't even think I streamed the last time they did the drops, really. Or if I did, I don't remember because it was so inconsequential. Oh, no, I think it's very likely, yeah. Um, I'm expecting them to go a bit harder. They might keep doing the drops every time anyway, um, just because, you know, more viewers is always good, I guess. But yeah, for sure. I think that like being more strategic is is where they're going to go. Like, I, I expect to see them go pretty hard when whenever there's an expansion release as well. They could have done more for um Saras, right? That's, you know, but then again, they didn't really do anything in terms of making that into an event whatsoever. And I don't know, maybe, maybe we're asking a little bit too much of the Arena Net marketing team um, to, to do something like that, okay? Um, I don't know. Maybe, you know, guess... maybe just maybe just retweets with no text is as far as it goes. You know, that's that's like the uh, that's the giga marketing, right? <laughs> if, if I had to guess, I think it's a massive risk for them to market those things when they just they don't know if you're going to be able to kill it in 10 minutes. Because imagine what if they had done that for Dagda? What if they were like mm. raced? Cause what, what if they thought that Dagda was really quite difficult and they released it? And said race to world first and they like really pumped that up for like a week or two beforehand and then you guys killed it first try mm. like that would make them look like fools so i imagine there's actually a lot of risk to these sorts of things for them yeah especially when it comes to like the the raid boss stuff i guess because you know if they if they miscalculate it's uh it's gonna be a little bit rough <laughs> yeah they, they would have to be have to absolutely the certain. CMs in a state where they're pretty confident no one can actually beat it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like we haven't talked about Saras. So that's probably for a, another time, actually. But yeah, no, I, I agree. I think the correct strategy that they should take is this is similar to what they're doing. Wow, by the way, basically release it semi impossible. They're pretty sure it's maybe either it's just barely doable or slightly impossible, and then you just yeah, like, it down like on the like fly. they go. Okay, it has an eight minute enrage timer. We know what the 10 best players in the game hitting a DPS golem can do in eight minutes. Yeah. That's how much health we're going to give it. And we're going to add mechanics. So that way it's on the verge of mathematically impossible, yeah. you know, and then you nerf it as needed. Like once people realize it's impossible. Yeah, pretty much. 
They've got to be snappy on that, though. You know, like, I think that's that's where yeah. they would struggle. Well, and the problem is, I think the, the risk there is that if you create something that's like mechanically impossible, that would be the issue. You'd have to make sure that it's doable in terms of the mechanics. Yeah, you can't have eleven um, AOEs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and yeah, yeah. and if and if one person goes into each, <laughs> they, then you wipe because yeah, that would be a problem. Yeah, uh, but if you can mess with the numbers, then it's it is indeed doable. Yeah, or it's riddled with bugs. Well, I mean, you know, Seraphs wasn't that buggy. It had a couple of things that were pretty bad about it, but you know they fixed them pretty quick like what the issue with saris is that they haven't handled the the follow-up very well this is thing that i will uh don't worry guys i'm gonna criticize arena for this one they messed up big with the cm uh it's still way too hard for the vast majority of the players in fact the cm is not that much easier than the legendary mode but look <laughs> that's a uh, another thing for another time i think you know we can we can have that conversation later um, but yeah, it's, uh, enjoy that. Yeah. And there are some insanely overtuned mechanics. Like stuff like gluttony is absurdly overtuned. Um, and that hasn't been adjusted yet. Like that's the kind of stuff that ain't need to get good at if they want to kind of keep content like this going, in my opinion. Uh, but well, now we're, now we're terminally derailed at this point. Uh, but I think we've kind of got to the end, um, of the show. Bonus guest, DeRoya Gaming as well, guys. He's in the mix. Progressing Sarah CM, rank one. Every week, let's uh, go. Pumper, yeah, big pumper. He's getting purple in every hole, purple in the title as well. It's going to be good. But anyway, I think that's... If that, if that happens before Guild Wars 3 comes out, yeah. I'm going to be impressed. You're going to be progressing five years on this uh, on this fight. It's going to be a five-year I mean... progression session. <laughs> you never know. By then, yeah. there's going to be like we, a we rainbow... We keep losing players, that's the thing. By then, there'll be like a rainbow of colored titles available yeah maybe. you need to go to equip yeah, more than think one roster cm is hard oh roster cm is very faith. hard trust me like you know raid it uh, roster cm is brutal i was very lucky with Ceres that the roster was pretty stable but i have been mercilessly fucked by roster cm in world of warcraft over the past five months and honestly not in the good way it has it has you are an almost good self-immolated like four times wait what she, wait wait, wait yeah. what do you yeah, mean she, lauren was on the verge of cracking multiple wait, times what? What? What i heard mean? the comms she was like you want to kick me don't you and you're like where are you getting that <laughs> from <laughs> like <laughs> <laughs> yeah it was, it, the team was the team was about to crumble thank god you guys killed it when you did gray hairs oh my gosh was it really that stressful Oh, it was, it was pretty intense, yeah. It was, you know, it's, you know, it's, it's a hard boss. It's a you know, hard boss. But anyway, unless anyone has any final thoughts, I think it's time to wrap this up on the Guild Wars 3 tea time. Tea time is back, guys. Uh, probably not permanently. Uh, there's not really a lot to talk about. <laughs> you know, Arena just leak everything these days. So uh, tea time is obsolete, but we'll be around sometime. Don't worry. Uh, but anyway, it's time to, uh, you know, Say goodbye and also say hello to our incredible guests and they will tell you about themselves and what they're up to these days. Okay, right. Let's get this done. Number one. In the top left, it's uh, SG Leader, uh, Tyrion Gazette Enthusiast, <laughs> um, Gamer, <laughs> Professor <laughs> Sneb, Dr. Sneb. Uh, what, what's going on, man? What's, uh, what's the situation? Yeah, uh, well, <laughs> I'm I'm Prague and Sarah CM. I'm actually probably going to do it later today. I don't know if I'll stream it or not. I may. Um, but yeah, Prague and Sarah CM running the, the SG thing. We've got 135 statics. We're doing World versus World and Fractals now as well. Anvil Rock is the greatest server. All other servers are irrelevant. Mm. That's true, by the way. So yeah, if you want to get into endgame content or you want to like meme around and just portal bomb people all day on Anvil Rock, then you should definitely join Scan Gang. Also, we have good shirts like this one. See? Good logo. Looks like a middle school hockey team's logo. It's perfect. That's why I love it. Is it a duck <laughs> or a swan? It's a goose. Close goose. enough. Sorry, man. I tried. <laughs> you tried. Close enough. Okay. Kind of like the hybrid of those two things. And next up, we have Nike. Definitely not April Fool's ArenaNet employee. Definitely didn't trick anyone with that. What's uh, what's going on? We'll find out, won't we? Yeah. <laughs> but uh, uh, I'm not. I don't have anything to promote, really. 
Well, there it is. I have all the fans I need. I don't need yeah. any more fans. <laughs> All right, and then Go finally, surprise guest, Deroya, purple in every hole. Me from the void. Yeah, we summon him from the void. Sarah CM, progression fan. Uh, it's happening. I mean, I, I've got I mean, it's there. actually it's actually going really well. I'm yeah. trusting in my team. Yeah, okay. every week we come back Flame to them. It. Flame it's them, going Deroya. Slow, Who's no, the anchor? No, no. Who's the no, anchor? Everyone's, everyone's good. Everyone's good. Who's not putting in the work? Who needs to be kicked? No. <laughs> Everyone's doing fantastic. We're progressing slowly but surely. Anyways, Who's paying yeah, for it? Uh, I don't know. We everyone is. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I, I've got nothing else to promote as well. Yeah. I was See, working. This I, was actually, about. I, was, I was working on something really oh cool God. that I'd hope to have out tomorrow, but it's been <sighs> taking so 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 long that I I didn't even, I barely Bro. even wanted to talk about it. I, I I maybe I should complain about this more, but seriously, man. It, the Guild Wars 2 fucking stream scene is so dead, bro. It actually, it's beyond dead. It's it's like been I, I, I mean, dug up, unearthed multiple times. Anymore. Exactly. Yeah, you don't even exist. Nike does more Zwift than uh, Listen, Guild Wars 2. I made a YouTube point. video two weeks ago, and I've gotten nothing but hate in my DMs from yep. it. So I don't even want to promote it, even though it's a banger. So Okay. Like, it's, it's too, you do yeah. anything, you get attacked. So yeah. I, don't, I don't want it. And when, you know, when does um, Sneb do Guild Wars 2. He plays Warcraft 3 and like flames people out in 4v4 RT. That's all he does. That's literally all it. he does. Yeah. It's the best. Yeah. That's like, what if happens. you if you do not save if you do not TP when your ally is getting like destroyed by three people, you are the scum of the earth. You're just sitting there, you know, you're just you're like in your base role playing and your teammates just like please help please and then you just don't do anything mm. yeah you're you're not a good player if there was a way to kick people from your groups in warcraft 3 you know there, there are times when i would rather they leave so that you can control their units mm. <laughs> yep well okay yeah. that's a good place to end on you should follow everyone's social media here, even if, you know, I mean, well, we're not yes. promoting anything. The only one that matters is mine. Uh, follow my stream, subscribe on YouTube. If you're watching on YouTube now, we stream on Twitch and you can watch Tea Time on YouTube as well. You can watch it everywhere. We're everywhere. We're all over the place, guys. So follow, subscribe, I just, I, come back and watch. Watch the other Tea Times. Yeah, okay, what do you got? Do it. Speak. This is really important. I just want to say that I do know how to put things on Spotify and um, you should put Tea Time on Spotify. And it's painful to me that you have not. And I just want the YouTube. I want every single YouTube comment to to, to just say, "Tea time on Spotify when?" Question mark. We're editing because this because I th I think we can do it. I <laughs> I believe I know how to do it. I I think we can do it. Will you be responsible for it though? Uh, we could. I could, we could make an arrangement. See, see, we'll yeah. We but anyway. That's it, gamers. We are done. I'll still be streaming afterwards because, I mean, why the hell not? But until the then, only my friends. The left standing. Yeah, the last man standing. You know, I'm standing in a graveyard of dead content creators. I mean, a core with dead content creators, right? Like, you know, it's they're everywhere. Uh, but anyway, that's it, gamers. Hope you enjoyed the stream. Leave <laughs> Let us know what you think in the comments. <laughs> Tell us what you think about Guild Wars 3. Will you uninstall the game? Will you play the game more? Will you post on the subreddit? Will you start trolling? I don't know. Will T time uh, be on Spotify? Who, who yeah, runs yeah. the Guild Wars Three <laughs> subreddit? Right that, now? Ooh, that's actually going to be hot. Actually, who's going to make that? If I find out random user is it's involved in running that subreddit, no, I already he, checked. He has got to go. <laughs> Wait, guys, guys, I already checked. I already checked. I already checked. Um, I did this the other day because I went to go try to take it so that I could oh, be mod. Oh shit! You could be mod. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but some, but somebody else already has it. Oh it's, um, shit! It's the Eric Humphrey guy. I don't, who's that? I don't know who that is. Yeah, um, I don't I know. Maybe it's like a, somebody who has like 40k um, achievement points or something. I think that's the guy. Wow. He must be cool. <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy. I mean, well, I just, I think it's like a long time <laughs> player of the game. I don't know the other people. That was such a genuine I, laugh. Wow. Love that. <laughs> right, okay, this in, this outro has gone on long enough. We're out of here. Take it easy, gamers. We'll see you next time, okay? Yeah? Boom, we're done. Bye. <laughs>